Hey, it's Peter here for Lyratron, and I'm going to show you how to build the new Air Harp Shield 1.2. For contrast, the old 1.0 was significantly longer, both in the board length as well as in uh, the fact that the underlying Arduino protrudes by uh, 0.35 inch. Uh, so we got rid of that, so now the total length is significantly shorter. Uh, we also went to the more ergonomic 12 millimeter push buttons and we added a, an ultra-bright LED uh, which projects a beam of light out into the air onto your hand and shows you where the ultrasound is looking at. Okay, first of all, to build one of these, you will need an Air Harp Shield circuit board from Luratron. You will also need a Max Botics lv Easy one ultrasonic rangefinder module. You could also use any of the other lv Easy series range finders. Uh, we originally built the Air Harp with an LV Easy 4 which is just a narrower beam. Um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I believe there are other range finders from Max Botics also are pinout compatible with the LV Easy series. So um, pretty much any range finder that's compatible with the pinout of this should be fine. Um, you're going to need five push buttons uh, in, in this one we used the uh, regular 12 millimeter uh, push, push buttons, but uh, this time we're going to use the type with the uh, little pads on the top. Um, you'll need five of those. Uh, you'll need an ultra bright narrow divergence light emitting diode. Uh, this one's 50,000 millicandela blue. It'll blow your eyeballs out if you look straight into it. You're going to need a 220 ohm resistor. Uh, those are the ones that are color-coded red, red, brown, and quarter watts fine, probably eighth watt even. Uh, now, uh, for this, um, these come in sticks of 40. They're called breakaway headers, usually. Um, you're going to want to divide them into three groups of six, two groups of eight. So you need 34 of them. and. Uh, the remaining six you can do whatever you want with. You're going to want a soldering iron, preferably one of, of quality, and you're going to need some solder. Um, I'm not a soldering expert by any means, uh, but my dad, who was an aerospace engineer for many years, taught me the procedure for soldering. Uh, now the procedure is uh, wipe. Now this is damp uh, sponge, not like sopping wet, but just a little moist. Wipe, tin, do your soldering, and then put away. Wipe, tin, solder, put away. That's the procedure. Works very well. So first just take your buttons and just pop them in like so. Uh, make sure you put them in from the top side. The top side is the side that has all the text. It says Air Harp Shield 1.2. Bottom side doesn't have any text, so it should be easy to tell but you're going to solder these on the bottom side. Now when you solder them, push them down like so from the from the top side while you're soldering them on the bottom side. So that way they're nice and well seated. You don't want to solder them, you know, half sticking out. So with the Maxbotics ultrasonic sonar, you've got seven holes here, but you're only going to use six pins because there are only six holes in the air harp shield. So the pins are labeled ground, five volts, TX, RX, AN, PW, and BW. Forget about BW, you're not going to use that one. Leave BW, Bravo Whiskey, empty. Insert your pins from the top side with the long tines facing down. Now we're going to solder this from the bottom side and then we're going to, so it'll be its own little module, and then after it's been soldered here for good electrical connection, then we're going to drop it in and we're going to solder it again on the bottom side of the air harp shield. Now we can take our LED and insert it so that there's two ways of telling which way the LED goes. Um, one of the uh, wires will be a little longer than the other one. The longer one is positive. That's one method. Uh, the other method is there's a little flat spot, and it's really hard to see, but on the LED it's not perfectly round. There's actually a flat spot, and that flat, uh, that flat um, 
aspect to the to the side of the of the circle when you're looking straight at it, you, it's usually easier to feel. That is the that represents the lead that's negative. The short lead, the side with the chip out of it, that's going to go uh, up when you're looking at it like this. And it says LED, and there's a plus and a minus clearly indicated on the board, so you can't go wrong. And just slide it in, push it all the way down, like so. Um, now, you can splay these out a little bit. Actually, with an LED, I wouldn't recommend splaying them to keep them in place. I would just hold it with your finger from the other side. And just solder it right there. Now, you can take your dikes, your diagonal cutters, and just cut like right next to the blob. Don't cut the blob itself, the solder itself. Just cut, uh, just cut it so it's like a little cone. <clears throat> now we can take our resistor. The beautiful thing about resistors is they're not polarity sensitive. It doesn't matter which way you put it in. I personally like to put it in with the. Uh, uh, with a red, red, brown going from the top to the bottom, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so bend the leads like that so they're bending right at the body of the resistor. And then insert them where it says R1. And push it all the way down. Now on the bottom side, you want to splay them out like like that. And that will hold the resistor in when you're holding the board upside down. Uh, last thing you want to do is be trying to hold the resistor in with your finger on the other other side of the board because your finger's not going to like that. Once you've gone ahead and soldered that resistor in there, do the same thing with your diagonal cutters. Just cut those leads off right next to the blob of solder. Our rangefinder module has been soldered uh, to the header, but now we have to solder this, this module to the air harp shield itself. So go ahead and just insert it from the top side, like so, and try to, try to make it straight. It should be straight, actually. Uh, Push it like this with your with your finger or something, and then you're gonna to make sure that it's well seated, and then you're gonna solder it on the bottom side of the board. Okay, now that we've soldered up all of our components and they're all nice and firmly mounted on there, we can take our header pins and we can stick them into the Arduino. Long tines down. Like so. And then we can take our air harp shield and we can just go ahead and lay it on top of these pins so that they're protruding through to the top side. Now that's going to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. All the pins are, are, are just straight as an arrow. And now holding this firmly in place, we're going to solder these pins from the top side. All right, our air harp shield is complete, but our task is not over because the next steps are first to program the Arduino with the LHOS or Light Harp OS firmware. And then the step after that is to hack the Arduino by reprogramming this little chip, the uh, ATmega 8U2 so that it will act as a class compliant USB MIDI controller instead of uh, an Arduino when you plug it into the computer.